and a quarter to five, I was supposed to be interviewed live by the Israeli TV about issues related to women's health and the situation in Gaza and seconds after I left my daughter's room with my son Abdullah. Less than five seconds. When I reached the salon, the first shell came. I thought it is from the outside because shelling, hitting, firing from everywhere and I expected everything is happening. Because it was going on all the time. Oh, yes. Non-stop. Yeah. So when I saw the smoke, the dust, the chaos inside, I realized it's my daughter's room. I went inside to see. I can't recognize them. I can't see. I want to see where is Bisan, where is Mayar, where is Aya, where is Noor. They became parts. Mayar, the lovely, beautiful, tall girl, can't see her. Decapitated. Shada in front of me, standing with her eye on her cheek, her fingers attached by skin tag. Those girls became parts, drowning in pool of blood. For nothing they did. Yeah. They were girls. Full of love, of hope, of education, of care about others. And the three girls, your three daughters were there with Noor, their with cousin. Niece. Yeah. They had just, I think, gone up to the room to study, had they? They were sitting there chatting after we started to plan after I gave them my cell phone and we have no electricity and thanks to my daughter Shada who thought how can we charge it but the need is the mother of a creation those lovely girls who were bright Shada she said I learned in the school with her niece Gaida we can create an electrical circle from the radio batteries and to connect it and to charge the cell phone for a short period of time. My daughter Dalal, she wasn't at home. So I asked them, what is Dalal? We want to know. What is she doing? She is worried about us. We are worried about her. So I asked them to call. Aya, she spoke with her and it was the first day. That Mayar is telling me, congratulate Aya. I said, for what? She said to me, she became mature. She has the first day of the period. So she spoke with her sister. Bisan spoke with Dalal, Mayar, Shada, and Aya. And I spoke with her. And Aya wanted to continue to speak with her sister. So I said to her, Aya, please keep the battery of the cell phone for any emergency. We don't know what will happen. As if they knew this will be the last call to speak with their sisters. One hour later, as I said, the first child came. Their sister doesn't know that they were killed. When I went to the camp with my children, with my daughter Shada to the hospital, to the Palestinian hospital, my son Muhammad Abdullah and Rafa, they went. To their aunt's house. And Dalal saw them. What brought you here? They told their sister. Our sisters are killed. It must have been absolutely devastating for you and for the rest of your family to stand in that room and know that three of your beautiful daughters were dead along with their cousin and in such a horrendously brutal way as well. I go there 
to remember them, to see where they used to sit. Where is their computers? Where are their toys? Where there are books? Because it's a room full of life, full of education. To see the wall, the ceiling, full of stars, they fixed them. It's a room that I want to smell, my daughters. What did they use to do in this room to keep them alive? And thanks to God and to my daughters, they said, we will stay in the same room. This is our daughters, our sisters' room. And in the, the immediate minutes, I think, following the rocket attack, you actually had an interview with your friend, an Israeli journalist, yes. whom you, you, as you said, uh, you used to uh, give him updates on what was going on in, in, in Gaza. And it was extraordinary because actually your interview, you rang him up in desperation because your other daughter, daughter required hospitalization. Obviously, she had been badly injured. That's why at the same time I was supposed to be interviewed and I started to think of those who are severely wounded, Shada, my niece Raida, who was dead. I thought that she is killed. But my son said to me, Raida took a breath. She is breathing. That's what makes me realize that she is alive. So I called, and I know Gaza, what can they do for those cases? Gaza for three weeks, 5,500 severely wounded, and 1,400 killed, and, and siege for three years. They have no ability to deal with, those, with this number of cases, and even one difficult case. And the same moment, to see my daughter Shada, are they going to take her eye? That's the treatment. Because her eye was very badly injured, yes. obviously. And you needed to get her into a proper hospital because I think you felt the one in, in the Gaza Strip wasn't going they to be can't. able to have the facilities. And I know my colleagues, well, I used to work in the hospital just two days before the war. I came back from my hospital in Tel Aviv. So I asked to save lives and to help. And it's God's bless that it was broadcasted live to hear and to see the craziness that there are innocent people who are killed and to succeed to take my daughters to the Palestinian hospital and from there to transfer them to the Israeli hospital. 